daffodils. These beautiful yellow trumpet shaped flowers make all of our hearts sing, covering the earth in an orchestra of yellow, playing in the songs of spring. As the birds sing along to their warming songs, our hearts beat along, letting us find a sense that in the nature of spring, we all belong. Ah, the daffodils, what an incredibly beautiful sunshine yellow coloured flower. Daffodils are like the messenger of spring that's been sent ahead to let us all know that spring is on its way. But known throughout the world for its incredible beauty, there's much more to the daffodil than many people know. So if you're interested, then come with me and let's dive into the world of the daffodils. So one of the first things that many people don't know about daffodils is they're toxic, they're poisonous and potentially deadly poisonous too. Now daffodil poison is pretty rare because not many people walk along and pick up these beautiful flowers and eat them but their bulbs look incredibly similar to onions. So daffodil poisoning often occurs when people dig up the bulbs and put them into soups thinking they're onions. Now to get potentially killed by daffodils is rare and if you accidentally eat some you'll probably just get an upset stomach. Back in 2009 a primary school somewhere in the UK I can't remember where accidentally put a daffodil bulb in their soup in their cooking class and the whole class got very sick but they was all okay in the end. But if you do consume too much daffodil you'll start to tremble, become paralyzed and then just drop dead. Now daffodils have been loved for thousands and thousands of years. Our love for the daffodil has always been there. It's always been a part of our hearts. You can find evidence of the daffodil being mentioned going all the way back through history to the ancient Greeks where they used it as a traditional medicine. Despite its potentially lethal effects, they used it to treat tumors. Hippocrates and Socrates used it for that purpose. Wow, they do smell absolutely beautiful. And there's no wonder why people have loved them all through time, just popping up with their bright yellow, vibrant colors. The daffodil is even mentioned being used for medicine in the Bible. Now what's even more fascinating about the daffodils is how they're used nowadays in modern medicine because you see this beautiful yellow trumpet shaped flower, this is actually rich in a natural compound called galantamine and galantamine is incredible because it's been proven to slow the symptoms of Alzheimer's disease. How amazing is that? You can find galantamine in snowdrops and daffodils but it wasn't until long ago that this was an unreliable source of this special compound and it took a lot of money to extract it and there isn't much within your normal daffodils. But this all changed when a scientist and an ex-sheep farmer got together to discuss the potential of daffodils and found that if they plant them on the high mountains, the Black Mountains of Wales, which are 1,400 feet above sea level, they found that the daffodils then became rich in galantamine and they called this the Black Mountain Effect. Now this small company with a team of five produces 20 kilos of galantamine a year which helps 9,000 people across the world help to ease and reduce their Alzheimer's symptoms. So there's around 160 different types of daffodils on this big beautiful planet that we're all living on and they all fall into a group which is known as a genus and the genus of daffodils name is Narcissus. Ah oh, they smell amazing. Now you might be thinking Narcissus that name rings a bell and that's what leads us to the morphology that's intertwined and surrounds the daffodil flower. sweet violet tea with a hint of lemon on a warm sunny morning. You don't get closer to spring than this. 
Now, the mythology that surrounds the daffodils is fascinating because a word comes from it that we still use today, thousands of years later. We have to go all the way back to ancient Greece to a legend of a man called Narcissus. Now, Narcissus was a handsome man, a beautiful man that was incredibly good looking and people just couldn't help but fall in love with him wherever he went because of his dashing good looks. But Narcissus was an arrogant man and only loved himself and rejected anyone's affection, believing that they should not even dare feel that they are equal to him. One person confessed their love to Narcissus and for their reward, he gave them a sword, implying that they should go kill theirself for daring to think that they was worthy of his love. Long story short, Narcissus was one day walking through a woodland when a nymph named Echo saw him and instantly fell head over heels in love with Narcissus. But as Echo's name implies, she was unable to speak her own words. Echo can only echo back words spoken to her, so she was unable to confess her love for Narcissus. She slowly followed Narcissus through the woodlands, hoping that he would turn round and notice her. Ultimately, he turned round and thought that he was being followed and called out, who dares follow me? To which she replied, who dares follow me? Show yourself, Narcissus shouted, and Echo replied, show yourself, as she stepped out from the woodland. As Echo walked towards Narcissus, she walked out with her arms open wide, hoping to embrace him and show her affection and love to, towards him. But to her surprise, he pushed her away angrily. Get off me. How dare you think you're worthy of my love? Sending Echo running away into the woodland, crying and distraught, heartbroken at his cruel words. Echo ultimately faded her way leaving nothing but her voice behind. And it's said that when you hear your voice echo back from the hills, that's actually echo replying to your call. Now, Narcissus ultimately met his karma. One day he walked past a pool, a pond of water that was so still and crystal, it was like a liquid mirror. He saw his own reflection in this mirror and fell in love with himself. The only person he truly was able to love was himself. Narcissus stared lovingly into his own reflection for days and days, admiring his own beauty, glaring into his own eyes, until ultimately he became so malnourished that he fell into the pond and drowned and died. And it was said that a flower grew in his place, the daffodil that's now in the Narcissus genus. And they say the daffodil grows in a way that it leans over a pond. The daffodil looks like it's peering down into the pond like Narcissus was all them thousands of years ago. And it's also where the term narcissistic comes from today, meaning someone that only loves themselves. The so next time you see some of these beautiful trumpet shaped sunshine colored daffodils on your journey in this world when you appreciate their beauty on the outside never forget to also appreciate the beauty within and next time you hear your voice echo of the hills remember that the voice echoing back to you and the daffodil are forever intertwined anyways people it's been a pleasure and i'll see you all next time peace I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on high o'er vales and hills when all at once I saw a crowd, a host of golden daffodils beside the lake, beneath the trees, fluttering and dancing in the breeze, continuous as the stars that shine and twinkle on the Milky Way. They stretched in a never-ending line along the margin of a bay. Ten thousand saw I at a glance, tossing their heads in sprightly dance. The waves beside them danced, but they outdid the sparkling waves in glee. A poet could not but be gay in such a jocund company. I gazed and gazed, but little thought what wealth the show to me had bought. For oft, when on my couch I lie, in vacant or in pensive mood, they flash upon that inward eye, which is the bliss of solitude. 
and then my heart with pleasure fills and dances with the daffodils. A poem by William Wordsworth.